Hey there, and welcome to this video series about rock, paper, scissor. The purpose of these videos is mainly to talk about uh, the game and also about the structure of the game. We have a UML diagram and then about uh, how we can extend it. And I will also be making a demonstration of uh, how this is implemented currently in Java and uh, yes, how we can extend it further on. If we go to Wikipedia and see first that Rock, Paper, Scissor is a well-known game uh, that uh, is about two, uh, two people or um, a human and an AI. Could also be, uh, be between two uh, AIs, artificial intelligences that are uh, trying to beat each other. So we can see the rules here that Scissor will beat Paper and Paper will beat Rock and then Rock will beat the Scissor. So that is the pretty simple game rules in this game here. So next on, if we take a look at the structure of, uh, of this game. So it's implemented in Java, but it could be implemented in virtually all programming languages. Uh, so let's take a look at the UML for this. So this game here, quite large. Let's just open this up in a new tab there. So we can see here that we have uh, couple of classes and enumerations and also interfaces. So how does all this work together? Well, we have, um, we have a move enumeration, we have a result type, a result. We also have a player and we have a player interface. We have a game manager that also has an iGame state and a game state. Okay, but how does this work together? Well, first, if we take a look at some of the really simple parts of this game, the, uh, for example, the move enumeration, if we go and look in the, uh, let's just go back again. So if we go in the code into the business logic here, and we open up uh, the move, we can see that that's a really simple enumeration. We have rock, paper, and scissor. So that is quite simple. Okay, so that is just to help us determine the moves in the game and the player can decide what move should be. Okay, so uh, then we can see that we also have an iPlayer interface that is um, central to this game. And the iPlayer interface defines a player in the game. And there are three methods. We have do move, we have get player name, and we have get player type. And the do move is the most central and the one that you probably should pay most attention to because this is where we implement the code that will instruct the player to make the next move and uh, the do move will have an iGame state in as a parameter. So what is an iGame state? So we can see over here we have an, another interface called iGame state and the iGame state is basically an interface that defines how we can show the game state in the game. And if we look at the, find it right here in our code, we can see the iGame state. An iGame state will tell us something about the, the round number, how many rounds have we been playing in the game, and also importantly, the historic results. So that is a collection of results. So we can see that an iGame state keeps track of the historic results. So that is also why we have an aggregation. So an iGame state have a collection of zero to many results. So whenever the player needs to, to make a move, it can inspect the previous moves or the previous results. And then it can determine what should I do? Should I go with rock or paper or scissor? And then it can return a move. Okay, so that is the iPlayer interface. And because we have highlighted the player class, uh, you can implement other player classes that will have different uh, strategies for determining the next move. And if we take a look at the player in the code, because there is an example implementation of the player, of the iPlayer interface. Whoop. Uh, if we go here, and click on player. So we can see that uh, the player will implement 
the iPlayer interface. So this means that we need to override the get player name, the get player type, and importantly, we can see that the do move. And uh, in this example player, we can see that we have a really simplified AI because it returns rock every time. So it doesn't do any decision making. It just determines that I should go with rock. I really like rock, so I think this is the winner. But of course, if you are a human player, you will see that the that the AI will choose rock every time. You can easily win over this. So how can we make this more sophisticated? And then we have the historic data, historic results that we can use to iterate through and maybe do some um, find some patterns how the human opponent has uh, acted previously. Okay, so that is the player, a player uh, sample implementation. Finally, we also have, uh, we, ha we have the result class here that is uh, a class that keeps track of a round or the result of a round. So it will store, we can see it will store two players, the winner player and the loser player. And it will also store the two moves, the winner move and the loser move. And finally, it will store one result type. And the result type tells us if it is a win or a tie. So that is the result class. And uh, let's, that was, let's just zoom out a little bit here. And let's find the result. Let's see here, result type. Yeah, you can see the result type, win or tie. If we take the result, we can see that it keeps track of uh, one result based on a winner, loser, their moves, and a type. Okay. And also the round number. I don't know why I go there every time to IntelliJ. Okay, so then finally we have the game manager that will uh, contain two players and one iGame state. And the last thing here is that I have made a dashed line here. We can see we have the GUI. And currently the game is implemented with a console version. And I will demonstrate this uh, afterwards here uh, in the next video. And then uh, you can see how it works. And so the console version basically makes use of the classes here. But it could be awesome to see a new implementation that has another front end, another GUI than just a console app. Okay, so there are two parts in this. There is implementing a new GUI for this, other than the console app, and also implementing other players, other AIs that can uh, that we can work with. So I think this is uh, pretty much it for this first video here about the about the rock paper scissors game. And uh, in the next video, I will clone this repository and demonstrate how it works in IntelliJ. So uh, see you in the next video. Bye bye.